so let's take a break from review this week and let's talk about a contra controversial topic break in usually when it is controversial the comment section is quite colorful it's breaking bs yes it is is breaking bs no it is not you're assuming the answer has to be a yes or no why does it have to be allow me to give you something to think about look i cannot tell you if break-in is true or not since i've never seen a credible scientific paper with peer review published on it i have no measurements to show you and of course whatever position someone has on break-in is based on their experience or logic but logic and experience does not necessarily translate into absolute fact you have a group of people online who say they have experienced it while another group who said well it's all in your head now when something is as controversial as this settling it with logic makes no sense because the universe does not care if you win in a logic debate if we believe the truth of the universe can be settled by a debate we are back to the time before science i think the greeks used to do it in the old days right you know what I think the sun revolves around the earth. I see the sun rising in the east and setting in the west. So logic would have it, the sun revolves around the earth. So just because I win against you in a logic argument does not make it true. For me, any time where when something has many conflicting observations by actual users, it needs to be proven by the scientific method. And given I've already talked about it in a past video on cables, I would not talk about it again. If you want to check that video out, I will link it in the first comment. Do computers need to break in? Does it run faster after break in? You notice no one ever says that the computer runs faster after 50 hours. There are no conflicting reports by actual users, so that is why computer break-in is never discussed. Break-in, however, is heavily discussed in the audio world to the point where people go to war in the comments section for it because of, you guessed it, conflicting reports. So why make this video if I can't prove break-in exists or not? I love drama. I like to give my two cents. And Thomas and Stereo channel is more than just a review channel. Sometimes it is more like a buddy hangout and chat channel. So the problem I see when people talk about break-in is it is either black or white. Either all gear require break-in or don't. Rarely do I see people approaching this as some gear will benefit from a sonic improvement after break-in while some don't. One question I ask, when someone says break-in is BS, does it apply to speakers, amps, preamps, or DACs? Is it possible for someone to believe that break-in with speaker is BS, but break-in with amps is not? Think about it. It is two different things. Did the universe just decide that everything under the audio umbrella follows the same break-in rule, despite some of the gear being fundamentally different in design? Another question I ask, as someone who has a degree in statistics, is sample size. So let's take speakers for example, and you don't believe in break-in. Let me ask you, how big is your sample size to determine break-in is BS? How many brands have you tried? Let's say 10. So with those 10 speakers, you can conclude all speakers in the known universe will follow the same conclusion. There are thousands of speakers out there, but no, your 10 speakers experience would dictate how all the speakers in the universe will behave. You see, you see why sample size is important. Did you know that for something to be Statistically significant, the sample size should at least be a hundred. How many people you know have access to hundreds of new gear and, and I mean and, consistently put 200 hours break in with each of it? How many 200 hours do you have? Some of you are probably thinking, Thomas must have like five rooms breaking in 24 seven. My electricity bill must be crazy. Yes, and let me thank my Patreon for supporting me with my electric bill. 
Well, that is my smart ass way for me to sneak in asking for Patreon support. Hint, hint. Anyways, the reason why I'm able to break in most of the gear I give you is because I have a network of audio buddies. For example, if I bring it to my audio buddy, Mr. Quant, the first thing he does is run it for 100 hours. Now, I have experienced sonic improvement after break in in some of the gear I've tested. It is not with all the gear I've tested, but enough for me to believe that every time, whenever I evaluate something, if it does not sound good, I will not judge it, but at least give it 150 hours of break in. Why not 200, 300, or 400 hours? Well, as someone who has been a business analyst for a decade, whenever you approach a problem, you have to state your test conditions in the beginning and stick to it. You just need to be reasonable and consistent. Having said that, if something sounds good before my 150 hour hours limit, then I won't continue to break in and will make a video. How do I know that it is not because I'm getting used to the sound of the gear, but really a sonic change caused by break-in? Well, whenever I get something new in for review, the first thing I listen for is what bothers me. For example, sometimes it can be the upper mid-range glare. I will usually listen for a few hours and then take a mental note of it. And then I will lend it to my audio buddies. Now, by the time all my audio buddies try and the thing get back to me, it'll be used for a few hundred hours. Then what I listen for is not how it sounds before and after. After all, there's no way I can remember how something sounded two months ago. What I listen for is if the thing that bugs me is still there. Like if a specific speaker has no bass, I will listen for, okay, this speaker, does it still have no bass? So after going through hundreds of gear, I can say, yeah, some gear do benefit from break-in. Not all, but some do, and some really do. So let me share some uh, interesting observations with you. Once I had this Cayenne CS 150 tube integrated and in for review. Now I remember my audio buddy, Mr. Quad was the first to try it, and like usual, you plug it in and let it run for a few days. Uh, he'll let it run through the night. And you know what, now that I think about it, man, I should pay his electricity bill. Well, lucky at Quebec, your electricity is cheap. Uh, anyways, usually he would send a first report of his initial impression. And as the weeks go by, he would send me occasional updates. Now, this is the part that is interesting that uh, he did not know, but I actually knew. When you break in, you actually cannot just let it run for 100 hours straight. You have to play it for a while, let it rest, and then play it for a while, and then let it rest, and so forth. And you repeat the cycle. Now, one day I remember getting a text from him where he was quite shocked that the sound changed significantly one day after it powered off, let it rest, and then power it on again. He always thought he needed to just run it continuously for 100 hours. And that was an like, aha moment for him. So he and I have the same experience. Now, what is more interesting is this. Recently, Deckware sent me one of their amps for review. Coincidentally, that is how they suggest how to break in. You run it for a while, let it rest, run it for a while, and let it rest, and so forth. It is actually in their manual. That is why I said in my Deckware UFO video, you can tell Deckware is run by audiophiles. They actually listen to their gear. Behind the scene, from what I know, not all audio engineers know how to listen to their products. So what is the probability of three different people experiencing the same when it comes to break-in? Now, I'm not saying all amps break in that way, but what I'm saying is if you have actual real life experience with a lot of gear and you actually take the time to break it in, you might experience exactly what three of us had. The problem is sample size. You need to go through a lot of gear and also have the discipline. And I mean the discipline to put the time into breaking it in. Why is it that all products sound better after break-in? I can argue that if I design an amp and bring it to the market, I would definitely spend 200 hours listening to my final product. But you know what? Not all products I've tried, I like it better after break-in. Let me tell you a story. So there was this PMC DB1 Go speaker I reviewed. When I first got it, I was so 
blown away by how detailed and revealing the top end was. It was at my focal canter, like with beryllium tweeter, level, but rounder. Now, although I love the top end, I did find it a bit base shy, and I was telling myself, man, I can't believe this thing lacks base, especially it is a transmission line design. This was one speaker I did not ask Mr. Quad to help me to evaluate, so it did not go through that usual 100-hour cycle break-in. I lent it to Mr. 707, who only put a few hours on it, and I remember he felt the same. The base is really missing. Then I gave it to Mr. Kanta. Mr. Kanta, whenever he breaks in speaker, he uses disco music and blasts the volume, man. He just let it run for I don't know how many hours. Once again, just like Mr. 707 and me, Mr. Kanta found the bass to be a bit weak. Man, at one point I was so tempted to take out the, you know, that glue foam port at the back of the speaker just to increase the bass. If I made an honest review, that day, like if I made a video that day, I would say, well, the speaker is very detailed, but I wish I had more bass. So one day I got a message from Mr. Kanta and he said, hey man, the bass changed significantly before and after lunch. There is bass with the PMC speaker now. I was like, you sure, man? And when I got the PMC speakers back, yeah, yeah, there was bass. On my desk, the bass can dig deep enough that I can feel the gentle vibration on my desk sometimes. Now this was a case where there was a significant difference after break-in. Now here's the thing. I actually prefer the speaker before break-in. Now with the extra bass, the top end is less apparent and it creates a more balanced presentation and less bright. But, but, but I love that super revealing top end and I lost that. I actually wanted the pre-break-in speaker back. Oh well. So out of all the gear I've tried, there are times I prefer before break it. Recently, I got my hands on this Pierre Audio Integrated Amp. Mr. Vintage, my audio buddy, loved it. But after a certain time, he told me, hey, uh, the sound changed. And he did not like it as much as before. Did the sound change because of break-in? Let's assume it did. And this is a case where yeah, break-in actually was not desired by Mr. Vintage. I say for him only because for me it still sounded fantastic after break-in. So, if you have actual experience with break-in and have tested a large sample size with lots of hours, the key word here is lots of hours, you sometimes come, will come across interesting results. The reason I say not all gear experience significant changes after break-in is because if I have to say, some of the DACs I tested tend to not change a lot after break-in. So let's end this video. I am not attempting to convince anyone because I don't care if you believe it or not since it's not like my bank account will increase by convincing you. Well, at best my ego would. My point is when it comes to a contro controversial subject like break-in, the truth most likely is not black and white. Some gear will benefit from it while others meh. Some of you might say, well, if break-in is true, you should be able to demonstrate it in a sound clip, like a sound demo. Yeah, remember that Yamaha AS2200 uh, amp I reviewed? I did exactly that. I recorded a sound clip when it was fresh out of the box and then a clip after break-in. It was a blind test because I did not tell my viewers anything on my community page. And yet 72% of you can hear a difference. Now, does it mean break-in is real? Well, yes, for this Yamaha which was also collaborated by others, but it does not mean it is true of every single amp in the universe. Now, what would be cool is if I take two exact same amp, one before break-in and one after. Now, of course, I'll choose an amp that I know there's a sound difference, blind test 150 people and see the results. But just like the Yamaha example, it really does not mean anything. All I can prove is that it is true for this one amp and not every amp in the universe. Now, at the end of the day, what does it mean to you why break-in is important? I think the takeaway is simple. If you bring something home and don't like it, give it a bit of time before making a final decision. Give it time to break in. Now, Thomas, I bet you all the companies who say break-in is true is trying to get you to keep it past your 30 days return period. Dude, 
that are over 700 hours in a month. Be smart about it. Also, if on the 29th day you decided to keep the gear and not return it because you felt you have not spent enough time breaking it in, then it is on you. You are old enough to make that decision and not blame anyone for it. Plus, I believe it is not right to assume every single manufacturer in the world who claims break-in is real are crooks. It is an attack on the integrity of the people you have never met. Sure, there will be some companies run by crooks, but not all. I believe people are fundamentally good. Maybe because most people I meet in life are good. It is, in my opinion, just like you cannot use a blanket statement calling all audio gear in the universe do not need break-in. You cannot use a blanket statement calling all manufacturer who believes in break-in is trying to get you to keep it past the return window. That is just my two cents. Now, before I let you go, of course, like the video, but most important is to leave a comment sharing your experience with break-in. If you have experienced it, if you have experienced to the point where there's no doubt, put a comment so that other people can also, you know, gain from your experience. All right, guys, till next time.